Good afternoon. Before we begin the main function, we now witness the unveiling of the plaque at the Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation. A very good afternoon, everyone. I warmly welcome you all to the opening of the Center for Health Systems, Policy and Innovation, and the launch of the special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal, commemorating the 75th anniversary of the World Health Organization. To start off the day's proceedings, please rise for the national anthem. As is customary for us to commence all auspicious events by lighting the traditional oil lamp. I would like to invite the following dignitaries to light the lamp. The High Commissioner of Canada, Mr. Daniel Good, the World Health Organization representative for Sri Lanka, Dr. Alakar Singh, Additional Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sunil Dialvis, the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Vidya Jyoti, Senior Professor Vajira H.W. Disanayaka, Social Development and Gender Specialist of the Asian Development Bank, Mr. Sudarshana Jayasundara, Professor A. Padmeshwaram, the Joint Editor of the Ceylon Medical Journal, Dr. Palita Abekun, the Advisor to the World Health Organization, Dr. Susi Pereira, Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Health, and Mr. Bandara, the Deputy Registrar. Thank you. And now it's time for the puja dance, which will be performed by the medical students of the Faculty of Medicine, Colombo.
Yanabi Mahipati, Tong Yanabi Padamulena, Nang Yanabi Satagraha, Takaro Meganadas, Chikaro Asanadaka, Tong Karo Kumbari Jaiva, Nang Karo. Janana Janana Tanana Tanana Janana Janana Tanana Tanana Tom Tom Janana Janana Tanana Tanana Tom Tom Janana Janana Tanana Tanana Gita Dumi Kota Kadim Natri Kita Tom Nachirahe Kori Sri Lankan health system, considered a low, high-impact, low-cost model, has many lessons to offer to the world. 
The Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation is being established to support policy and innovations focusing on national health priorities related to health systems in primary health care. The World Health Organization representative for Sri Lanka, Dr. Alakar Singh, will now deliver the welcome address. Dr. Singh. Hi, Bhavan, and good afternoon. The Regional Director of WHO Southeast Asia Region, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh, who I believe could be joining us virtually. Deputy Head of Mission, the Canadian High Commission and Representative from the ADB, Vice Chancellor and Senior Officials of the University of Colombo, members of the Editorial Board, Ceylon Medical Journal, Senior Officials from the Ministry of Health and Education, distinguished guests. On behalf of the World Health Organization, I'm pleased to welcome you all for the opening of the Center for Health Systems Policy, Innovation, and the launch of the special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal to commemorate both 75 years of WHO as well as 75 years of our partnership with Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka has been an exemplary case study for global public health. The country's strong programmatic approach has achieved basic health indicators well above the country's income group, comparable in fact to developed countries, based on equitable and quality services for all. The challenge in Sri Lanka post, sorry, pre-pandemic was from NCDs, non-communicable diseases, and of course COVID-19 changed public health in the most fundamental way for the entire world. Sri Lanka faced an unprecedented country-specific polycrisis poly as well, and this is ongoing, including a significant economic downturn. For health, the experience further underlines lessons learned and best practices from NCDs, that the determinants of health are increasingly complex and often beyond the health sector, requiring a multi-sectorial and multidisciplinary approach. And conversely, the impact of health itself on social development and economic growth is now indisputable. The Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation is a very timely initiative. It'll create a network of national and international experts and institutions to support the Ministry of Health with multidisciplinary evidence for decision making as well as capacity development at all levels. And it'll also create opportunities for experience sharing for strengthening PHC oriented health systems going forward towards recovery in Sri Lanka. I would like to thank the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, for housing the center. The university, as you know, is a leading academic institution in Sri Lanka and globally, and gives an invaluable support to the center. I'm particularly pleased to note the presence of faculty members from across all disciplines, both medicine as well as health-related areas. As the international academic partner, WHO is already working with the George Institute, providing support to other countries in the region, particularly on primary health care. Together, our academic partners have the potential to create a so strong network for policy-based research and capacity development across institutions in Sri Lanka for an inclusive effort to support the Ministry of Health to sustain and advance Sri Lanka's remarkable achievements in health. And in time, I'm sure the center will also provide support to other countries beyond Sri Lanka. My appreciation to the Canadian government as well as the ADB for contributing to this WHO initiative and may I emphasize that now, more than ever for Sri Lanka, development partners must consolidate our assistance for health for all, fully aligning to national priorities, avoiding duplication and fragmentation. Today, we are also launching a special issue of the Sinon Medical Journal. The CMJ is the oldest surviving medical journal in Australia with a proud history of over 135 years and plays an important role in strengthening the evidence base for health and in disseminating findings. This particular special issue has benefited from contributions from leading public health experts on lessons learned across disease programs and system areas for recovery and resilience in health in Sri Lanka. Again, a very well, warm welcome and thank you. 
Thank you, Madam. As you heard, there are two academic partners, the George Institute for Global Health and the University of Colombo. The project lead and the chief scientist from the TGI, Professor David Pires, is unable to be with us today. We will now play a recorded message from Dr. Pires. Let's listen to his message. Honorable Ministers and Secretaries for Health and Education, the WHO Southeast Asian Regional Director, and WHO Representative to Sri Lanka, representatives from the Canadian High Commission and the Asian Development Bank, and distinguished colleagues at the University of Colombo, and to all the guests who have made time to attend this meeting. It's a real privilege for us at the George Institute to be able to join this collaboration and co-establish the Centre for Health Systems Policy and Innovation. I'm disappointed to not be able to attend this event in person due to an unavoidable commitment, but I'm looking forward to meeting with many of you in the coming months. I thought I'd start by telling you a little bit about the George Institute for Global Health. Our mission is to improve the health of millions worldwide, and we seek to do this through three key focus areas. The first is better treatments, conducting research to find better treatments for the world's biggest health problems. The second is better care, which is about transforming particularly primary health care and strengthening health systems to support better health for people. And the third focus area is around health societies, healthier societies, which is harnessing the power of governments, communities and markets to improve health. The George Institute was first established in Sydney, Australia, 24 years ago, and we affiliated with two top ranked universities, the University of New South Wales in Sydney and Imperial College London. We have over 700 staff distributed across four regional offices in Australia, India, China and the UK. We generate around 850 research publications per year and on the most recent Times Higher Education rankings, we were the number one ranked medical research institute in Australia, number three in the Asia region and number 33 in the world. While we're proud of these achievements, we want to do so much more and focus on building strong and equitable partnerships in global health that generate tangible health improvements. And that's why I'm so excited about the Centre for Health System Policy and Innovation that we're establishing together with the University of Colombo and support by the WHO and ADB. We have three main objectives for the Centre. The first objective is around rapid translation of research into policy and practice. We plan to conduct national and international research on health system strengthening. We're going to adopt the, what the WHO calls an embedded implementation approach to our research. Rather than researchers developing the research question, we seek to be more responsive to government stakeholders and answer the questions that matter to them, with a particular focus on developing strategies to strengthen primary health care, both in Sri Lanka and internationally, and showcasing the knowledge gained from Sri Lanka to a wider audience. The second objective is around promoting policy dialogue. We will develop a platform to increase dialogue between key stakeholders for generation and dissemination of knowledge, exchange of lessons learned, and building consensus around best practices for health sector reforms. And the third objective is focused on capacity strengthening. We will increase capacity in health policy and systems research to support the next generation of leaders in the field. We're particularly excited to already launch our first course in collaboration with the University of Colombo around implementation science. We're covering four key topics in this course and we're taking our students through this at the moment. The first is around better awareness of how to use implementation theory. The second is understanding the importance of problem analysis and working in partnership with diverse stakeholders to address the problem. The third is developing evidence and theory-informed intervention strategies. And the final part of the course is focused on using practical tools to evaluate the impact of those strategies. We're also excited about some other courses that we have in development. We're discussing at the moment a course around health technology assessment, health policy analysis, health equity and qualitative research methods. And quite possibly there are other course opportunities that will be developed as we get more established. So I'll finish by saying we are excited to join this collaboration with the University of Colombo. I'm especially fortunate to be co-leading this initiative with Professor Disanayaka, and it already has been a great pleasure working with him on establishing the centre. We expect this to be a long and fruitful partnership which will deliver high impact results. 
We've already hit the ground running with the launch of our first course, and we're looking forward to working with the students and staff involved in all of our courses. And finally, I would like to again acknowledge the critical support of the Sri Lankan Ministry of Health, the WHO, the Canadian High Commission, and the Asian Development Bank. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And now we have a recorded message from the Regional Director of the World Health Organization for the Southeast Asia Regional Office, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal Singh. Honorable Minister of Health, Dr. Kehilya Rambukwela. Honorable Minister of Education, Dr. Susil Premajayanta. Secretary, Ministry of Education, Mr. Nehal Rana Singhe. Dean, Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Vidya Jyoti Professor Vajira H.W. Desanayake, Deans of Health-Related Faculties, Partners, Colleagues and Friends. It is a pleasure to join you today at the University of Colombo to launch this path-breaking center for health systems policy and innovation, as well as a special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal devoted to primary health care. Both initiatives are warmly received and will accelerate efforts here as across the region to reorient health systems towards quality, accessible, affordable and comprehensive primary health care to achieve universal health coverage and health security. I thank and commend all involved especially the Dean Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Vidya Jyoti Professor Vajira Desanayake, as well as the editorial board of the CMJ and the journal's many contributors. Your initiatives could not be more timely. This year, together we mark two important milestones. First, WHO marks 75 years of protecting, promoting, and supporting health and well-being to fulfill the right of every person everywhere to the highest attainable standard of health. And second, Sri Lanka marks 75 years of independence. But while marking these milestones, we also celebrate our shared journey together. Sri Lanka was one of the first of the now 194 countries to join WHO and quickly establish itself as one of the most prominent champions globally of the right to health, expressed in WHO's founding constitution. And in pursuing this right, Sri Lanka was also highly influential in promoting the primary health care approach to achieving universal health coverage which was later enshrined in the 1978 Declaration of Alma Atta and then renewed in the 2018 Declaration of Astana. Today, we build on and strengthen this legacy, committed to achieving UHC and health security in the shadow of the deadliest, most disruptive health crisis in more than a century. For that, the Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation will work across three key streams, building evidence for health systems policy and innovation, strengthening capacity for policy implementation, monitoring and evaluation, and creating new opportunities to exchange knowledge and experience. Action in each of these areas is critical to addressing a range of present and emerging health challenges, not least the health impacts of climate change, aging populations, and inadequate human resources for health. I express my utmost gratitude to the government of Canada, the ADB, for supporting the initiative, as well as to our friends and collaborators at the George Institute. My thanks also to the deans of health-related faculties, many of whom are with us today and will contribute to this initiative. Complementing the endeavor, the special issue of the CMJ presents new evidence to accelerate PHC orientation, drawing on studies 
from across Sri Lanka. Specifically, the findings highlight the need to achieve a better balance between facility-based specialist care and care provided at the community level by community health workers, especially for an aging population. The need to recalibrate and adjust health workforce production and distribution, accounting for migration, and finally, the need to mobilize adequate and sustainable financing, while at the same time, increasing the efficiency of funds already available. Among other key takeaways, it highlights the urgent need to shift away from siloed and fragmented service delivery in favor of increased integration, especially at the PHC level, a message that I fully endorse and which is aligned with our regional strategy for PHC and build back better vision. Together, let us leverage these initiatives and accelerate action to achieve health for all based on national priorities and policies while avoiding duplication and fragmentation. In this milestone year, I reiterate WHO's ongoing and unmitigated support for a healthier, more equitable and sustainable future for all. I thank you. The Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation located in level three of the UCFM Tower, was opened by Dr. Alakar Singh a little while ago. I would like to invite Dr. Singh to launch the website of the center by using the tab that is now being presented to her. Thank you. This year marks the 75th anniversary of the World Health Organization in Sri Lanka. To mark this anniversary, we have a special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal. I would like to invite Professor A. Padmeshwaran, the joint editor of the Ceylon Medical Journal, to provide an introduction to the issue. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have to make a correction. To start with, I am no more a joint editor of the CMJ. I am part of the CMJ. One of the joint editors is here, Professor Sumatipale, and the other one, Professor Senaka, is out of the country, so I am representing the CMJ. Uh, to start, uh, Dr. Poonam Singh, our regional director, uh, Professor Vajiradisa Nayaka, the dean of the faculty, and uh, Dr. Sunil D. Alvis, Additional Secretary of Health, <laughs> distinguished guest, dignitaries, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to say a few words about the special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal. December last year, uh, Dr. Alaka Singh and uh, Dr. Palita Abekun asked me whether there is a possibility of bringing out a special issue of the CMJ to celebrate or to commemorate 75 years of WHO in Sri Lanka. And uh, when I put this to the editorial board, there was ready agreement by the editorial board that we should do this. And uh, there were several submissions, and out of these, we found three of them to be of adequate standard to be included in the CMG. And uh, these, all three of these were COVID-related, but different aspects of covid uh, original articles. On top of that, we got some invited uh, perspectives and uh, reviews from eminent people. And uh, it has about uh, three, four perspectives and three or four reviews uh, by both international and local experts. Uh, the WHO and CMJ together forms a very strong partnership 
I realize this because when we asked renowned people like Professor Malik Piris and uh, Professor Sir, J Sir Michael Marmot to contribute, they readily agreed and contributed to this journal. And uh, the, in the invited contributions highlight Sri Lanka's achievements, the WHO's contribution, and uh, also in diverse areas of health. We have papers dealing with elimination of malaria, achievements in maternal health, lessons from the pandemic, and lessons from Sri Lanka to the world. There are papers highlighting the challenges we face in financing healthcare and producing and retaining healthcare workforce in a global environment with strong pull factors and push factors for the migration of healthcare professionals. We, don't know, we do not know how many of the graduates from this faculty will be in, working in Sri Lanka in 10 years' time or in which countries they will be working, in how many different countries they will be working in 10 years. Uh, now I would like to formally hand over the special issue to a few people at the front. Thank you, sir. To conclude today's proceedings, I am pleased to invite the Dean of the Faculty of Medicine, University of Colombo, Vidya Jyoti, Senior Professor Vajira H.W. Disanayaka, to propose the vote of thanks. Dr. Poonam Ketrapal Singh, the Regional Director of the World Health Organization for the Southeast Asian region. The uh, World Health Organization representative in Sri Lanka, Dr. Alaka Singh. The uh, Chancellor of the Canadian High Commission in Sri Lanka, who is representing the High Commission uh, this morning. Dr. Palita Abekon, Senior Advisor to the WHO. My fellow deans from faculties in our university as well as from the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Jaffna as well as the representative of the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Sabaragamwa. My colleagues from the Sri Lanka Medical Association, Professor Patmeswaran and Professor Atula Sumatipala, colleagues from the Ministry of Health, Dr. Sunil D. Alves, as well as Dr. Susie Perera and all others who are here, a representative from the Asian Development Bank. Colleagues from the faculty, postgraduate and undergraduate students, distinguished invitees, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a red letter day in the annals of medicine in our country because for the first time in an academic institution, we are launching a Center for Health Systems Policy and Innovation, not as a center centering on that institution, but a center for the entire country and as time go by, goes by, probably for the entire world, as well as a center that is 
by its core, multidisciplinary in nature, going beyond medicine and looking at the wider determinants of health, economics, social, sociocultural, and financial, and everything else. So it is a special day for all of those reasons. The uh, center has been in gestation for a long, long time. Last year, I had the opportunity to visit the WHO office and have a discussion with Dr. Alaka Singh um, on what we plan to do in the faculty. And she responded with the plans that she has and the WHO has on going forward. And uh, there was a meeting of minds, as it were. And um, that led to a partnership that built up over the past year, not only bringing together the uh, representatives of the WHO, but also our international partners. So in that process, we partnered with the George Institute in Sydney. And uh, that has been another meeting of minds, as it were, because in the past few months and uh, that we've been working with the George Institute, its chief scientist, Dr. David Pires, and others, we have had, I think, one of the most fruitful collaborations that I have seen developing, evolving, and manifesting in the, not only the center, but the training programs and other things that we are planning to uh, offer, of which the uh, certificate program in health, uh, in uh, implementation sciences was launched just la uh, yesterday with the participation of large numbers of students. When we registered, we had 120 registering, and we are now taking them up in two cohorts. And the first cohort of about 40 started yesterday. So Dr. David Pires and his colleagues are joining us from around the world, as it were, from Australia as well as in the UK today. And um, I'd like to begin by thanking Dr. Pires and uh, the George Institute for their collaboration, the um, fan of friendship that they have extended to the WHO and to us to make it possible for this center to become a reality. Of course, that collaboration, that matchmaking that happened between the WHO, the George Institute, and us wouldn't have come to fruition, would, have, would not have come to fruition if not for the generous funding that we received from the ADB facilitated through the Canadian um, government. So therefore, I'd like to on behalf of both the WHO and us, thank the ADB and the Canadian government on um, their generous contribution. And uh, before we came down here, I was uh, telling the Chancellor that uh, we've got to look at uh, more collaboration with Canadian academic institutions as well. Because I think uh, there are lessons that we will, um, you know, bring out in, through the work of this center 
that would resonate even uh, in Canada because we have so many of our own citizens and citizens from around uh, the uh, South Asian region in Canada now and we are, you know, I think Canada is a global village as it were when it comes to their citizens mix as it were. So uh, we're looking forward uh, to that um, collaboration that I'm sure the Canadian High Commission would be able to facilitate uh, for us. Coming back to uh, the uh, university itself, I would like to um, thank the Vice Chancellor for the support that he gives us. Today was a very busy day for him and um, uh, he had several meetings with uh, ambassadors and uh, even now he sent me a message saying he's still held up in that meeting. So uh, therefore um, he's not here today but uh, uh, he's always been supportive to our work and uh, being a health economics himself and uh, in the thick of things in terms uh, on determining the economic um, uh, you know, aspects of uh, running the country now, uh, he's very keen to support us with the work that we are doing and um, I'm sure we'll be uh, able to bring out uh, the uh, economic aspects of what we are discussing in this center uh, with the participation of a wider group of um, uh, people reaching out to the faculties of arts as well as the gra faculties of graduate, uh, graduate uh, studies that we have in our university and their wider networks um, to look at the economic aspects, the um, cultural aspects, the societal aspects and others both through the work of the departments located there as well as the departments of the wider network that we plan to build uh, for this country. The Ministry of Health is of course the most important partner uh, in this process because we need to translate what we are doing here, the policies and the innovations coming out of the work here to health benefits for the wider community out there. So I'm really happy that uh, the ministry is uh, represented by various directorates here today as well as our colleagues from the ministry who are taking part in postgraduate programs in the PGIM because you are the ones who will eventually translate what we do into practice, the policies, the innovations coming out of uh, what we do into practice. Anecdotally, I can tell you that yesterday uh, when we had the inauguration of the uh, uh, the implementation sciences program and as a part of that my colleague from George Institute Dr. Pires who conducted that session gave a task to our students and broke them up into groups and then they came back and made the presentations I think the entire faculty was so impressed with the quality of the analysis that they made of the problems that they were dealing with and uh, the quality of the presentation that they made. And we immediately saw the, saw the potential of involving all of those who were involved in that program, involved in the course, uh, in the work that we are doing. So as we go forward, we will take them on board, take all of you who are taking part in those courses on board, the work that we do, because you will be the ones who will champion translation in your work settings, wherever you are. And you are a key important partner in the work 
that we do. We are particularly pleased also that we were able to launch the special issue of the Ceylon Medical Journal today. Because the Ceylon Medical Journal can become a key outlet for the uh, analysis that we make and uh, the innovations that we, pro uh, that we advocate. And uh, having the Ceylon Medical Journal as a key partner in that process would be so very important. So I look forward to working with the joint editors of the Ceylon Medical Journal in that process and having them as key partners in our work that we do. Of course, uh, we also have um, many journals in our country, the specialty journals of the various medical colleges and associations. And I think, Dr. Singh, I was just thinking, sitting there, that we may need to make this uh, infectious enterprise, as it were, to get all the other professional colleges and associations to, to also think about their role in primary health care and how they could um, advance policy, innovation, advocacy, and translate them to their practice, uh, you know, to their practice. So we can uh, look at, with the good officers of the Ceylon Medical Journal, to make this uh, wider community of those who are advocating adoption of policy and innovations that we will try to highlight through the work that we do in the center. So thank you very much to the joint editors and the editorial committee, uh, Dr. Pat Mesvaran, past joint editor, as well as the Sri Lanka Medical Association, uh, which is represented in this uh, forum today by uh, none other than three more pr uh, presidents of uh, the association. Uh, of course, I was a the president, then um, uh, Dr. Pali Thabekorn too was a president. We also have um, uh, one of the senior presidents, uh, Professor Anoja uh, Fernando, and of course, uh, another one of the senior presidents, um, uh, Professor Sanat Lamabadusuria in the audience today. So we are building partnerships and we are building those partnerships uh, with the greater good of the country and uh, society at large and the world at large. And um, in that process, all of you are stakeholders, key stakeholders. And we look forward to engaging and working with all of you in the years to come. And I hope that the little um, acorn that we plant today will go on to be a mighty oak one day. And uh, Dr. Singh and uh, Dr. Palita Abekhorn, uh, I hope in a, another decade or so, we can all look back and you know, reminisce on that little discussion that we had, which brought us there. And uh, those who follow us uh, later on will you know, take it to different levels. And I think uh, we can all one day look back at uh, that little uh, you know, acorn that has gone to a mighty tree. And let's hope that those expectations that all of us had uh, a year ago uh, will be fulfilled and will translate into better health for citizens of our countries uh, in the wider context. Finally, it, remind, it remains only for me to thank my colleagues in the center, the Sri Lankan team, led by Professor Upul um, 
Sinarat, Dr. Dulani Samaranayaka, Dr. Yasasri Valpita, Dr. Roshan Hevapatirana, um, Mr. Bandara, uh, Snadisha Perera, and so on, who all came together to ensure that today's event, uh, as well as the build up to that, uh, went on meticulously. I'd like to thank the entire team uh, for the support that they gave me. Uh, and uh, it was uh, almost as if I think and they, you don't know what has to be done. I, it wasn't a case of, you know, I command and they do. It was almost as if uh, before, uh, you know, I was, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they read my mind and uh, they, were, uh, they had done what I wanted to do before I could even tell them to do. And that was um, the true sense of collaboration that uh, we had and uh, that gave me the courage and the, you know, um, conviction that we could deliver on the expectations that the WHO had of us. And I'm, um, I, uh, I know um, that uh, we were able to deliver on the promise that you, we made a la carte to you. I think that we will get this off the ground in the shortest possible time. And then also to all the participants today, it's your presence uh, that made this event possible. Thank you very much.
for your performance and thank you ladies and gentlemen that concludes this event we wish you a pleasant afternoon